we are getting a couple of motors with quite a bit of motor overrun. The Shimano EP801 with a 4.3.0 update, for instance. And the other one is the Bosch Performance CX Race. The Bosch Race motor has been out for a while, but and we haven't really heard any reports of this motor ruining snapping chains, bending cogs, but um, that could be because it's a limited edition motor that only comes on the most expensive bikes that are basically fitted with the most expensive drivetrains. And it seems the SRAM Access uh, transmission drivetrain holds up quite well to the abuse of this motor with the very long assist carryover. But we got the Shimano EP801 if we set the assist carryover to long. This too has very much, quite a lot, motor over. Uh, and the difference is the EP801, it's been out for like a year or more already. And it comes in a huge variety of price ranges. So some bikes will be fitted with cheaper drive trains, drive trains that aren't designed to shift under load. Uh, I'm currently riding a 2025 Merida E160 675. This bike has got the Deore Link Light drivetrain. It's a very nice match for this motor because it's designed to shift under load. But if you look at the cheaper E160 models, you get Q's 9-speed and 10-speed. How will they hold up? The reason I'm sort of singling out these two motors is they've got a lot of carryover. Like, I think the maximum that is permitted by law. And uh, when riding trails, there are certain situations where you just can't avoid having to shift on the load. We're going straight forward and oh crap, there's a steep uphill. You have the choice, just shift or come to a halt and uh, shift, lift the bike. I mean, no one does that. So yeah, you're forced to shift. Pedaling, shifting, pushing, maximum. And then when you get to the top of the hill, you of course want to go faster and in, you're in a very light gear. And here we just want to shift down multiple shifts and just hit the pedals. But with a lot of motor overrun, if I don't want to shift on the load, I have to pause for like a second or something and then shift once, pedal to have <laughs> the bike shift down, pause again. Yeah, that's not going to happen. It's going to take several seconds getting up to speed in the correct gear. So as soon as the hill starts leveling, leveling out, I'm going to shift. If you want to ride in a normal fashion, there will be lots of situations on each and every ride that you will be forced to do a bit of shifting on the load with these extended overrun motors. So the drivetrain will have to handle it. And, uh, I sort of praised the Shimano Dior 10-speed link glide system. It's rugged, designed to shift on the load, but we sort of managed to snap the chain anyway. Ay, ay, ay. I'm not going to say it's the motor or the drivetrain that's to blame, because this is a demo bike and who knows what this bike has been up to before we got it. It might very well have, have a few strikes to the chain ring, smashing up the chain. It did snap under load, but we spliced it, fixed the chain mid-ride, and uh, it shifted fine for the rest of the ride. And the subsequent rides, it's been flawless. So, will this be a huge problem? Not necessarily, but... Just riding this motor with all this overrun, feeling what's going on with the chain when shifting, 
even though I try to suppress my mechanical sympathy, you, you will feel what's going on. And uh, okay, it felt fine for the most part on this bike, but I fear we will see a few broken chains and cogs as more bikes get this update on the Shimano EP801. Hopefully I'm wrong. I guess dropping it to middle would improve things and uh, if you leave it at the default short setting then I assume there won't be any issues. The motor behaves very much like it did before the update. That's it. Appreciate any likes and subscribes. Thanks for watching.